Welcome back. As we've been reporting, the Austin bombing suspect is dead after a confrontation with police. This breaking news now. Investigators have confirmed the suspect killed himself using an explosive device overnight while police tried to arrest him. As the police approached his car, he detonated the bomb inside his car. Austin's police chief gave a description of the suspect during a news conference earlier this morning. The individual involved in this incident was a 24-year-old white male, and we're not going to give out any information regarding his residence. President Trump tweeted about the developments this morning. Here's what he wrote on Twitter. Austin bombing suspect is dead. Great job by law enforcement and all concerned. Joining us right now is former special assistant to President Trump and former press secretary to Vice President Pence, Mark Lauder. Mark, good to see you. Thanks very much for joining us. Your expectations on next steps in terms of this investigation and your reaction. I think we need to find more about who this suspect is and what was his background, what was his motivation, where did he learn uh, this to make this technology? And are there any other devices still out there floating in the system? And that's what they're doing. How do you do that, though? I mean, they, they were very clear in terms of we don't know a motive. We don't know whether this individual acted alone. So that's where their focus is right now. Absolutely. And I think that's where you'll see the federal partnership with the state and the local police working across all platforms, using the resources of ATF, the FBI, profilers, kind of getting more information. And, and what they'll do is they'll talk to anyone who knows this suspect, and they'll start just building circles out from there and see where it takes them. Yeah, and there's so many criticisms of the FBI recently in the leadership, but it's nice to see what a fantastic job the troops did at the FBI on this spe specific situation. The rank and file out there are doing great work. The president noted, noted that this morning. Yes, I think sure that's did. very important. We want to switch gears. Uh, John and I and Heather uh, have been having a conversation about these trade restrictions that we're expecting the White House to announce tomorrow on, on China. Uh, we reported this first uh, uh, last week, actually, that these were coming, and we understand that the measures will include tariffs on imports worth at least $30 billion. That's what the Wall Street Journal is reporting this morning. Uh, tell us what you're expecting and why the White House is taking these actions. I think the president said very clear that we need to directly confront China with their unfa unfair trade practices. It's costing Americans jobs. And it does put such a huge hurdle in our companies who are trying to do business with the Chinese economy. And then, of course, on the, on the theft of intellectual property technology, that's a real issue for American companies. I, I agree, but it's like, is this the best way to do it through a blanket tariff of steel and aluminum uh, where we don't even get a lot of our steel and aluminum from China. Well, is this that is the a best separate way measure. to negotiate? This is a separate measure. I mean, what we're going to hear tomorrow are restrictions on trade and restrictions on acquiring companies in the U.S. Sure. I think you're right, though, Heather, because that's been the, the uh, criticism that the aluminum and steel was this blanket thing. Now we're talking about a more surgical situation to and, China. And, and I think Heather raises an important point, which is that a lot of Americans American business and a lot of American allies could get behind going after China I itself, but you have to. W but there's been a lot of opposition against the steel and aluminum tariffs. Why did they do that first, and why, why not go after China directly first and leave the steel and aluminum uh, tariffs as something? Well, I think this is. I mean, the president's been very clear. This is something very significant to national security. We don't build our battleships or our aircraft carriers out of out of uh, plastic. We build them out of steel and aluminum. And we, we have from lost so many allies, jobs like in that. We have lost a lot of jobs in that industry. We've already started to see some of those come back. And when you're looking at the broader on the global market, I mean, I, I saw a story in the Wall Street Journal last week or two weeks ago how the EU was very concerned that the steel and aluminum tariffs would cause China to dump their steel there yeah. and put their industries at risk. So, you know, it, 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 there is a global marketplace on this that we've got to be mindful Again, of. Again, that raises the point of go after, why, go after, why not go after China and not go after our Amer American allies like Canada, Australia, we're Brazil, seeing, we're seeing, Argentina. I think what you're seeing, though, is what the president has said, is that they're talking now with the EU, talking about NAFTA. All of this is interplayed together. We're seeing some of our allies step forward. We're seeing potential exceptions. And, and we've already seen a delay by yeah. the president when it comes to Mexico and Canada on steel and aluminum. Because he wants exactly. to put all these exemptions in. I'll just add that the White House will push back on what you're saying and saying the fact is, is that China has overcapacity. So we right. may 
may be having, you know, the imports coming from Canada, but that's because China has all of this overcapacity and it's selling out into the global market, and then we're buying it from other countries. That's right. what the White House will tell you. The overcapacity issue is the issue around China. Let me bring Dagan McDowell in here because Dagan, we all can get the idea that China steals our stuff. China is uh, forcing American companies to give up their technology before they even get a, a, a foothold in China, and even then, they can't even own the company that they do. They have to have a joint venture, and they'll only own 49 percent of that joint venture. The president wants uh, he wants the reciprocal. Uh, same situation in the U.S. And one other thing that the United States could do, and I'm curious what Mark Lauder has to say about this, but push to remove China from the World Trade Organization. There are a lot of ways that we can go after China. Again, with the ramping up the curbs on China, we're talking about imports worth at least $30 billion. I'm curious, because I've even heard the value thrown out as $60 billion. 60. I'm curious to find out how much money it is, is at stake here. And will the American people tolerate higher prices on at least some imported China goods? The answer, certainly from Trump supporters, is hell yes. I think what the president is talking about doing it, like you said, I mean, these, this is a range right now. We'll see it. We'll see it more later this week. And but what, once again, what we might see a little bit in higher prices. I think you'll see the market react. You will see uh, China make some concessions. That's that's the goal here is to bring them to the table. We are friends in many areas. We have many areas where we have to uh, do better, and economics is one of them. And protecting American uh, intellectual property and technology. And that's the president has said it from the campaign trail. He's saying it again uh, this week, and he's going to take action on it. John, how significant would you expect the price increases to be? I mean, now that we know that there are these aluminum and steel tariffs, they're going to be implemented, by the way, this Friday. Um, right. I think that there's going to be a lot of our friends around the world that will be exempt from this. But, but what are you expecting in terms of price increases on products, whether it's related to aluminum and steel or related to China? Right. Well, so start with aluminum and steel. We know a little bit from the Bush tariffs that were put in place back in 2000. And what they saw was price increases in the 2 to 5 percent range, uh, which flows through to everything from That's you know, a big deal. cars. It, it could be hundreds of dollars on a car. On the China tariffs, we don't know because we don't know exactly what they're going to be imposing uh, the, the tariffs on, what product areas. And I think it's important that our story today uh, says that they're not imposing them immediately. There's going to be some period of feedback, I think, that the administration is going to be getting from the industry. So I think we're going to see a lot. Of industry saying, hey, this affects our product, this affects our product. U.S. automakers, I think, will suffer the most because they get their parts mostly from overseas. It's, it's cheaper. So they will incur, I think, the greatest cost increase down to the consumers from the U.S. automakers. On the auto points, a really important point. I mean, we charge what, 2.5% and Europe charges 10% in terms of tariff, Mark? And China is 25%. So, I mean, that's a car. big difference. So that's why the president said, look, we're going to look at BMWs, we're going to look at Mercedes. Mercedes. <laughs> he did. He said that because we're Sherman charging a tariff of 2.5% and, they like and they've got 10%. And while they like to talk about motorcycles and the impact on Harley Davidson, char China charges a 42% tariff on motorcycle imports. Oh we charge nothing. Isn't, it, there you isn't go. it tough to look at it product by product? Because th these deals got done th between the U.S. and other trade partners on a multilateral, multi industry basis. You're, you're negotiating a little car here, a little food export here. It's a good and point. It's, it's kind of hard to just Compare one product to another because we might be gaining in ways that don't show up in w when you look just at one individual mm -hmm. product like cars. I, I do think that when we're talking about it though and using the individual product examples, these are further reinforcing the need we've got to get China to the table and deal with this because it's something that's been kicked down the can has been kicked down the road too long. All right, so we'll expect those announcements tomorrow morning. That's when uh, we are expecting it out of the White House. Mark, thank you. Thank you, Mark Lauder, joining us there.